Hi everyone, are you just getting started using Flow Designer or perhaps already using it to create and automate processes inside your organization? Well, here are my top 10 tips for using Flow Designer. Number one, use subflows. You've built a fantastic flow that digitizes and automates a process that previously was tedious and manual. Congratulations. But take a look at your flow. Does it contain a series of actions that logically belong together? If so, put them in a subflow. This makes that part of the flow a reusable component that can be used in other flows. And from the Utah release, you can even select multiple actions and convert them into a subflow. Now your flow is modular and you've got a subflow that you can reuse. Number two, use the diagram view. Did you know there is more than one view of your flow? It's called the diagram view. It enables you to get a better overview of the flow and clearly visualize the paths your flow can take. There's even an option to download it as a PNG image so that you can easily share your flow with others. Not only that, but you can also edit your flow in this view. Please note that as of the Vancouver release, not all flow logic types are supported in this view. I've included a link in the description that lists the currently supported components. Number three, use error handling. When something in your flow doesn't go as expected, your flow stops. Perhaps a record couldn't be updated. Maybe a user is no longer active. You can anticipate errors and perform specific actions in response to them by enabling error handling. Maybe you want to record a log message. Maybe send a notification to the admin team. Number four, use send notification over send email. The send email action in Flow Designer is very basic. By using send notification, you can use your existing email templates and email scripts and all the other functionality in the notification application. And if you work in a multi-language environment, you can then use multilingual email notifications, something you cannot do with the send email action. Number five, use decision tables. In addition to subflows, another way you can make your flows more modular and flexible is by using decision tables. When you need to evaluate data using multiple conditions, you can extract that logic and place it in a decision table, removing your series of if-then steps in your flow. You may want to also give permission to others to modify these values in the decision table, thereby affecting the results of your flow without them needing to know how to edit the flow itself. One of the basic principles of scripting is that we make scripts modular and reusable, so we should apply these same principles to our flows as well. Number six, use transform functions. One of the best things about Flow Designer is that it allows you to create processes without coding. And transform functions allow you to quickly perform simple operations on your data. For example, you can perform mathematical calculations, replace string values, join strings, convert case, extract date values, and many others. Number seven, annotate your work. Flows are a lot easier to construct, read, and understand than scripts. But there is one thing that you can do to make your job even easier, and that is to annotate your actions. You annotate your code, so annotate your flow. It doesn't take long. Some flows can be quite long and may contain branches, and you'd be surprised how long it will take you to comprehend what's happening, even if you were the one who created it. So do your future self a huge favor and annotate your work. Number eight, save your work often. Don't be caught out. Flows are not automatically saved, so make sure you save your work after every change you make to it. That way, you won't lose a lot of work if, for whatever reason, something goes wrong. You lose connectivity, your session time's out, whatever. Some flows can be quite long, so do the right thing and save your work often. Number nine, use generative AI actions. Take your flows to the next level. From the Vancouver release, you can tap into OpenAI and Azure OpenAI to perform generative AI operations. You can generate content for a knowledge base article, get answers to questions, summarize content, and determine if texts express a positive or negative sentiment. You can even provide a generic prompt and open up your flow to all kinds of possibilities. AI is the most exciting new feature in ServiceNow and one with a lot of potential now and in the future. So watch this space. Number 10, use Process Automation Designer. 
Is your flow getting too big? Is it designed to continue for days or even weeks with branches here and branches there? Stop. For longer processes, you can break up your flows and other actions into shorter, easier steps and connect them all with Process Automation Designer. Think of it as Flow Designer or Grown Up. Flow should be short and sweet. Processes in Process Automation Designer cover those business processes that do take longer and which may involve various teams in your organization. Take a home loan application as an example. As a flow? No, no, no. Create a process in Process Automation Designer that is just as easy to use as Flow Designer. And just like Flow Designer, there's also a diagram view so you can visualize the entire process. So there you have it, my top 10 tips for using Flow Designer. Let me know in the comments below if you have any tips of your own. Until next time.